Hello and welcome to the news here on Magic Breaks Now India's first property business channel. I'm Krishna Kumar. Let's take a look at the top stories that we're tracking. Just a day to go for the winter session to end and the real estate bill has not yet been tabled in parliament. This comes after repeated assurances from the government and the opposition. Will the home buyer be slighted again? Real estate prices have bottomed out and buyers should not expect any more price corrections according to a magicbricks.com report. Is this the right time to buy then? Mumbai ranks second in the list of highly polluted cities across the country, finds a report by India Spend. Will Mumbai wake up and take note? The new year is around the corner and we at Magic Bricks now get you a roundup of what's trending, what's selling and where should you put your money in the new year. In our special series, Realty Roundup, we get you a close look at the market. And in our special series, War of the Cities, we tell you about New Delhi's plans to get smart. Straight up our top story, it's a washout session yet again. The winter session of the parliament has not been functioning as expected and crucial bills like the GST and the real estate bill have been hanging in limbo despite getting the cabinet's nod on the 9th of December. The government is yet to table the real estate regulatory bill for discussion. With just a day left for the session, it seems highly unlikely that the bill will get passed. My colleague Deepa Rana joins us now with some details. Deepa... Yet another snub for the home buyer, isn't it? The real estate regulator bill has been snubbed by the NDA government. The bill that was introduced in 2013 by the UPA regime has, uh, has been delayed for about two years now. Uh, the real estate regulator bill, which got a nod from the cabinet on December 9, has not yet been tabled for discussion in the parliament. It has been 13 days. Remember, the Rajya Sabha Select Committee had submitted its recommendations on July 30 and cabinet gave the nod for the bill on uh, December 9. Despite the fact it has not been listed, even the housing minister had told us that the bill is going to be listed, but it has not been tabled for discussion. Now, with just one day remaining, it seems that even if if the bill is discussed tomorrow in Rajya Sabha, it will not become an act of law as it has to pass through the Lok Sabha as well. Uh, all in all, now it seems that the home buyers will have to wait for uh, the summer session in 2016 for this bill to be tabled for discussion in Parliament. Thank you, Deeparana, for that report. On to the other big story that we're tracking over here. Home prices will not correct further. That is the takeaway from a report by magicbricks.com. The report expects prices to remain stagnant at least for the next six months. Ruchi Deshpande examined this report and she joins us now with the details. Ruchi, what exactly does the report say? Will the prices rise going forward? Uh, if you are a potential home buyer, then now might be the right time for you to go ahead and buy that house. A report by uh, magicbricks.com states that there will be no further correction in the prices, which means the uh, prices of the homes will not rise or fall in the next six months. Now, when we spoke to uh, magicbricks.com, they told us that there are three main reasons as to why they don't see a correction in prices. The first one is uh, if the developers go ahead and get the prices down up front, this will lead to a negative consumer consumer sentiment because they will uh, uh, they will uh, uh, expect these uh, home prices to fall further and hence there will be no demand or uh, sale. Secondly, the, uh, there is heterogeneous uh, inventory which means that uh, uh, piling, piled inventory across the board is not equal, it's in various stages of construction with some of them, uh, some of them being complete, some of them being not complete and uh, hence the normal demand and supply rules do not apply here, hence there will be no sale again. And third and the last one in case of uh, the lower budget uh, housing segment, the prices are already kept at a certain level, hence the developers cannot go ahead and reduce those prices further due to which uh, there will be no demand or uh, sale as yet. Uh, in conclusion, when we spoke to Magic Bricks now, they also told us that uh, this price, uh, these prices of homes will remain stagnant for the next six months, which again means that uh, there will be no price rise for the next six months. Uchi Deshpande there with the latest on the magicbricks.com report. Now, we also spoke with uh, Rohit Vats of magicbricks.com for a better perspective on the price correction in the residential market. Listen to what he had to say. The weighted average price for uh, all the 11 cities have uh, has been fairly stagnant. While explicit price correct correction might not have happened, 
there is a time correction of prices which basically means is that uh, the properties that you're getting today costed uh, the same two days back when you index uh, the uh, when you index the price for inflation which has had been pretty high for past uh, two years what you find is that uh, in most of the cities the prices have actually gone down as compared to what was the price level two years earlier. It, it is opined that the prices have reached a level where they are unaffordable and unless and until developer community rationalizes this, these prices, uh, this inventory overhang will remain. This argument uh, does not hold uh, across the entire uh, uh, segment of real estate market. Uh, to say that uh, simply because of price the consumer is not buying the property and price correction will uh, lead to uh, a movement in the unsold inventory we feel uh, is not the silver bullet which everybody is making it out to be. Shifting focus now to our special year-ender series, Realty Roundup. In this series, we track all the hot markets across India and tell you how they have fared in the last one year. We also tell you what areas you should be betting on. Today, we take a look at the Delhi NCR residential market. How has the national capital region performed when compared to the rest of the cities over the last 12 months? Uh, Suyesha Savant, who tracks that market, brings us his report. The Delhi NCR market has uh, been quite dull in the residential sector in 2015. Uh, now, when I spoke with experts, they told me that in comparison to last year, the number of units sold have dropped from 49,945 to 42,610, which means that the annual sales have dropped by almost 15% uh, in comparison to last year. And when you compare it to 2012 and 13, uh, the annual sales have dropped by almost 32%. Now, even the inventory Entry number uh, amounts to 2,46,500 this year, which means that there is almost 70 months of inventory that is lying in the market. It has been one of the worst markets is what they had to say. Uh, but there has been a very marginal price correction when you talk about the primary market. But in the secondary market, the price correction has been uh, almost of 20 to 25 percent. Um, this is because in the primary markets, builders have not really reduced prices. But to compensate for that, they have, uh, you know, tried to offer offer uh, discounts and uh, special offers and schemes to lure the buyers. Uh, also one very important thing to note in the uh, NCR market is that it has usually uh, been a very investor driven market um, and investors usually come in at a time when the prices are surging. But uh, this year what has been seen is that the investors have quite exited um, and also what they had to say was that when you compare it to the other markets like Mumbai, Pune and Bangalore, those markets have remained comparatively stable. They've also been down, but they've remained comparatively stable. And uh, uh, the secondary market has not really seen a correction as such. But in the Delhi NCR market, that is an important thing to note, that the secondary market has seen a major correction. Now, uh, sales patterns have also drastically changed because, like I said, you know, the NCR market belonged more to the investor than the end user. But now the market has become cautious on the whole. Execution is a question, which is why, uh, you know, a lot of investors have exited. And to take that forward, I have uh, Surbi Arora, Head of Research at Colliers, uh, joining me here live on the news on Magic Breakdown. Surbi, thank you so much for being with us over here. Uh, first up, I'd like to get a, an overview from you. Tell us, uh, how has the residential real estate market in the national capital region fared uh, over the last one year? Okay, see, uh, 2015 was not one of the best year for residential real estate market in NCR. With a uh, rebound in the commercial real estate market, the expectations were that the re residential real estate market will also pick up. However, we see a stagnancy in the re residential real estate market. If we talk about the number of launches in NCR, in 2014, there was a prop 35 to 36,000 units were launched. In 2014, if we talk about uh, new launches, they are around 20 to 22,000 uh, uh, units in, NC, in, in the entire NCR. So there is a prop 30% decline in new launches. Um, uh, regarding the prices, capital values in second primary market have not gone down. The developer have launched the project at the similar price of 2014 level. So they have not come down. Now, uh, they, but they are giving a lot of freebies like free car park, they are giving furnished apartments to boost the sales. Um, 
they are also providing lot of uh, position link plan innovative payment plan like 20 uh, 20 20 60 20 80 where you have to pay initially only 20 percent and you can pay rest of the amount at the time of the position all right, Surbhi, now tell us uh, what are the emerging markets uh, in the national capital region? You know, what should the buyer look out for going forward? See, the emerging markets, uh, uh, in terms of new launches, there are a lot of new sectors, the Sohna region in Gurgaon, which are uh, witnessing new launches. In terms of uh, the completion of the project, I say there will be a lot of completion we will see in New Gurgaon, Dwarka Expressway, in Noida, we will see completion at Noida Expressway and the sectors like 70 to 76. All right, Serbi, now tell us, uh, give us uh, your predictions uh, for the year 2016 when it comes to the National Capital Region's uh, real estate market. Okay, uh, two, uh, the outlook for 2016 look promising. There are a lot of macroeconomic indicators that are indicating a positive outlook. For example, the interest rates have come down. They are into single digit now for home loan. Uh, there is a possibility of real estate regulator bill coming into the market. So once the bill will enact, there will be definitely a boost in the investor confidence, especially the NRI investors. Again, in terms of commercial real estate market, it is doing well uh, for last two years and we are expecting the market will do good in 2016 as well. So there will be employment in the market. All these indicators are posing a positive picture for residential real estate. For investor, I can say that plan long term if you are looking for an investment, if you are looking for an end use, go for ready to move in properties because there is a lot of completion are expected in 2016 in quarter 1 and quarter 2. With the resolution of the NGT issue, you can find a lot of uh, units available at Noida Expressway. There are completion on sector 70 to uh, 78 in Noida market. Similarly, in Gurgaon market, you will see a lot of completion in new Gurgaon market where the people have started living in. So if you are an uh, end user, go for a ready to move in property. If you are looking for an investment, plan for 4-5 years. Surbi, before we let you go, one straightforward uh, question I've been wanting to ask you. Are you trying to say that this is the right time to buy? Yeah, you know, the market is almost stabilized for a year. We are not expecting any downgrading further in the market. So I think if you are looking for buy, this is the right time. You can get a good deal right now. Developers, if you are going for an under construction project or new project, you can uh, get good deals from the developer also. They are offering freebies. They are providing a lot of innovative plans. So I think this is the right time to buy property. Surbhi Aruda, Head of Research at Colliers. Thank you so much for being with us here on Magic Bricks Now. Mumbai, it's time to wake up. The air you breathe is as bad as the air in Delhi. This is according to a recent study by India Spent, who actually went around the city measuring air pollution levels. My colleague Disha Shah got us the key highlights of their findings. Take a look. One of the major reasons that the citizens of Mumbai are exposed to on a daily basis is of air pollution. According to the surveys done on the air quality, it reveals that the air pollution levels in the city of Mumbai has gone up to 500 micrograms per cubic meter, which is almost five times more than the acceptable standard, which is just 100 micrograms per cubic meter. Also, it was just recently when Maharashtra Environment Minister Ram Das Kadam also blamed traffic vehicle emission and mushrooming construction activities in and around in the city of Mumbai are the two major reasons that contribute to the highest number of air pollution levels in the city of Mumbai. Also, the data also reveals that the number of vehicles on the road this year has gone up to 3 lakh plus if you compare it with the previous year, that is 2014. Secondly, according to, according to the India Spends uh, recent data, it reveals that Kandivili, Worli and Lower Parel are the most affected and the most worst areas when it comes to the highest number of air pollution levels where the air pollution levels within the 10 uh, micrometer radius has gone up to 800 micrograms per cubic meter in these areas as against the acceptable standard which is just 50 micrograms per cubic meter. On the other hand, when we talk about particulate matter within the 2.5 micrometer radius, the air pollution levels has gone up to 375 micrograms per cubic meter which is against 
uh, 15 micro, 12 micrograms per cubic meter. So clearly when we also spoke to experts and environmentalists, they believe that it is high time for the government to wake up and take certain measures to control the air pollution levels in the city of Mumbai. Otherwise, the days are not far when Mumbai could also be called as the next Delhi in terms of air pollution. Mumbai could be called as the next Delhi. Nobody would want that. Uh, to get us a better perspective on that, uh, we have uh, Samar Halarankar, editor at India Spend, uh, joining us here in the news of Magic Bricks now. Samar, thank you so much for being with us uh, over here. My first question to you is, how critical is the situation currently on ground in Mumbai? Most of the sensors that we have, and certainly the government sensors, uh, clearly show that there is a problem, especially... Uh, in the commercial part of Bombay, which is the old mill lands, uh, along the dock lands, and in the suburbs. The suburbs are particularly badly affected, but I think the time has come that if you do not want Mumbai to slip into a Delhi-like situation, and on some days it does slip into a Delhi-like situation, um, we will have to do something really quickly. Okay, Samar, and uh, tell us, uh, what are the major reasons uh, that is currently causing the air pollution levels in Mumbai to go through the roof? One of the major reasons is vehicular emissions, especially from diesel vehicles. Uh, construction is another big uh, contributor. Uh, smokestacks emissions, which is from factories, is another uh, reason as well. And Bombay still has, Mumbai still has got enough factories within its area uh, to worry. But the point is the government has to do this and do this early enough and not leave it to the last minute to when things become really critical. All right, Samar, like you said, the government should take measures early and not at the last moment. So tell us, uh, what are the measures that the government should take uh, to control air pollution in Mumbai? It should start um, checking um, uh, the whole entire pollution checking system. Uh, the pollution certificates that are handed out have to be, that system has to be done. The checks have to be done properly. Uh, the centers that offer these pollution certificates also have to be checked. But more than that, I think they have to figure out uh, a curb on diesel vehicles. They have to figure out um, the, how they are going to regulate construction uh, sites. The other thing it must do is that it has to get the smokestack industries um, out of the city. There is no other option. There is obviously an economic cost to this. But unless they start taking the big smokestacks out of here, there, is a, uh, there will be, always be a problem. Samar Halankar of India Spend, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here on the news on Magic Bricks now. Moving on to our special series, War of the Cities. It's the race up to the top 20 and 85 of 98 have submitted their smart proposals. Who will be in and who will be out? As we await the answer, we at Magic Bricks now look at each of these cities who have submitted their proposals. Today, we take a look at New Delhi. The last time we got in touch with the municipal corporation's officials in the national capital, they were busy chalking out New Delhi's smart city proposal. The latest update is that the proposal is not only ready, but like I told you earlier, it has been submitted as well. To give us more details of New Delhi's smart plan, I have Naresh Kumar, chairman of New Delhi's municipal corporation, joining us here on the news uh, all the way from New Delhi. Naresh, thank you so much for being with us uh, over here. Tell us, uh, pan-city proposals and area-based development are the key criterions uh, for this particular round. What are you doing on that front? Uh, see, like as far as the NDMC is concerned, we are working on a two-pronged strategy. One is which is talking about the entire NDMC area, where we are working it out, having a smart grid, which will have an automatic metric infrastructure where we can manage that peak load through an analysis. Secondly, we are talking about, we are working it out on a 24-7 water supply and making a sincere efforts for uh, treating the sewer water for the purpose of the horticulture because in a large chunk of land in a DMC area is green area, we need in a lot of water, so we are planning for a treated water for using in a horticulture purpose. Then we are working it out on a smart hospital, dispensaries, polyclinics in NDMC area, the smart education, and, and we are working it out. I have a centralized command and control center for the surveillance of the NDMC area. So this is primarily on the pan-NDMC area. 
Naresh, uh, just wanted to ask you something very specific. Tell us what exactly are you doing uh, when it comes to area-based development? And the second part of our smart city plan is we have identified an area around the Connaught Place and the neighboring area of the Connaught Place. We are very working it out to have an, a, a smart car parking, additional automated car parking. We are working it out <coughs> for smart public toilets, the other facilities like uh, the <coughs> we are talking about uh, the happiness area where the cultural activities keeps on going on the weekends. And these are the few areas, and of course, like on a Pelican Crossing in the entire and Connaught Place area. So these are the few things we are working it out. All right, then now tell us uh, what is the kind of investment uh, that is uh, going into it on the whole? See, as far as the funding of the smart city efforts are concerned, we have in the four broad areas. One is that uh, we are expecting for an uh, uh, direct assistance from the Government of India as a part of the Smart City Scheme. Second is that we are dovetailing the certain certain activities as the part of as a part of the yeah. other schemes of the Government of India. And the third component is the private public partnerships where that private concessionaire will invest the money. And the last part is there but uh, the NDMC will uh, as will work it out through our own internal uh, revenues, uh, resource, financial resources. So broadly speaking, we are working it out that all these four areas will contribute about 25% of the total smart city plan as far as the capital investment is concerned. Now before uh, we let you go, tell us, uh, you know, what are the key focus areas uh, in New Delhi? We are working it out on a three, four broad areas. One is that we are uh, we are working it out having a very uh, trouble-free pedestrianisation. Footpaths are concerned with the Pelican crossings where that uh, on demand basis the signalling can be done. That is the one aspect. Second is that the last mile connectivity is a very important. So for that part, we are working it out to have an uh, electric buses to connect all the metro stations and the major business and the government establishments. And the third thing is we are planning, we are working it out to increase that uh, car parking, fully automated car parking in the business, uh, business areas of the NDMC. And then we are working it out from the parking uh, from the car parking, automated fully car parking to have an app, park and ride facilities. So these are the these are the efforts being made in this direction. Naresh Kumar, Chairman of New Delhi's Municipal Corporation, thank you so much for joining us here on the news on Magic Breaks Now. It's the war of the smart cities. And it has begun. New Town Kolkata is already smart, but what we are planning to do under the uh, Smart City program is to make it smarter. Who is chosen? Who is not? In order to make it to the list of top 20 smart cities, Vadodara has taken a dual approach. Proposal is ready and now uh, we are in readiness to submit before the Ministry of Urban Development. Who will become smart and who is out? The world standard. Uh, healthcare facilities and educational institutions we are uh, focusing uh, in this uh, smart city project. The architects of India's biggest urban revolution speak exclusively to India's first property business channel. It is clearly a war of the cities. Magic Bricks Now. And with that, we've completely run out of time here on the show. But remember, if you have any feedback or suggestions for us, write to us on the email ID flashing on your screens. We're also on Twitter and Facebook, so feel free to tweet to us or post your query on our Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. Also remember to check out our live streaming website, www.mbnow.in. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news here on Magic Now. Thank you for watching. This is Krishna Kumar signing off.